Chapter 6, Topic 3, The Study of Bacterial Growth. This is our last topic in a short, very dense chapter. I know you are probably worn out from all the new terminology you've had to learn over the last two topics. The good news is, this topic is much lighter on new vocab. The bad news is, we are going to be applying the concepts we've been learning to the previous topics in this one. In this topic, we're going to be studying binary fission, the rate of bacterial growth, the growth curve, and how we calculate growth. The learning objectives for this topic are to be able to describe the main way the bacteria divide, be able to define doubling time and how it relates to exponential growth, be able to compare and contrast the four phases of growth in a bacterial growth curve, and be able to identify three methods besides a growth curve to count bacteria. If we are going to talk about bacterial population growth, we first need to understand how bacteria replicate. This process is known as binary fission, where literally the parent cell will separate into two new cells. These cells are identical to the starting cell. This is accomplished through DNA replication as well as the replication of all the other cellular components. You can see how the cell works to divide on the graphic on this slide. Bacterial growth will always occur in an exponential manner. You can see of an example of this on the top graph on this page. That is because after every generation, there is double the cells to reproduce for the next generation. This causes population growth to occur slowly at first, but rapidly after a few generations. You can see these shown graphically on the bottom image. That is why when you are working in a lab, we tell you to only take a small amount because after two days of incubation, you will have a lot more. But your textbook goes into calculations on how to determine population growth. You will probably see questions in your online learning tools, and I will have a few simple ones on the exam. We'll also be practicing these calculations in the critical thinking exercises. But don't let the math freak you out. It's really not all that bad, and we'll work on it in class. That exponential growth we talked about on the last slide is actually only a part of the overall growth curve. This growth curve is for an entire culture, not just a single cell. What we showed you on the previous slide is for a single cell. Let's walk through a culture's growth curve now. First, we have the lag phase. In this phase, the culture is not dividing at maximum speed. This is partly due to low cell counts, but it is also due to the adjustment period by cells as they get used to their new home. We then proceed into exponential growth. In exponential growth, the cells are growing at their maximum rate, and this will continue as long as nutrients are readily available. This means that exponential phase will only last as long as you have provided is suitable and depending upon the inoculum volume. If you inoculate a large sample into a small amount of media, you will not have an exponential phase that is long. As the microbes reach maximum load, the bacteria will start dying off at the same rate as new cells are created. This creates a flat rate, a flat area on the growth curve. This death rate is due to the lack of nutrients as well as the production of byproducts from the other cells present. This waste continues to build up until it reaches a critical volume and the death phase begins. This is when the cells are dying faster than dividing. This is a phase that is avoided in the laboratory by passing the cells into new media every couple of days. Cells that are in death phase can have different traits and behave differently than those in the exponential phase. For this reason, we try to always use fresh cultures when performing assays in the lab. The last part of this topic is determining cell growth. It doesn't do us any good to understand how cell growth occurs if we can't measure it. We have three main mechanisms of calculating this growth. The first of, this is, the first of these is turbidity. This is a very simple and quick method for determining growth. We take a sample and place it in a machine that can determine how much light passes through the sample. We can then use calculations to determine the cell count. The second method is more intensive. This is counting cells. We have a few ways that allow us to determine the cell density of the culture. 
one of these you have done in lab is a dilution series. We can also use specialized equipment to help us quickly count the cells in suspension. Our last method is expensive and not utilized in basic laboratory assays. In this method we can detect the RNA in the cells and use this to provide us with a count for the culture. Well, that's it for this topic and for this chapter. As a reminder of what the learning objectives for this topic are, you should be able to describe the main way the bacteria divide, be able to define doubling time and how it relates to exponential growth, be able to compare and contrast the four phases of growth in a bacterial growth curve, and be able to identify three methods besides a growth curve to count bacteria.